Don't just avoid the virus, defeat it by strengthening your immunity. Simple, science-based steps to boost your immunity can help prevent or moderate infection, including challenging the conventional wisdom about vitamin C. Why do most people who catch the new virus have mild symptoms and some have none, while others, chiefly the old and sick, develop fatal pneumonias? Because people differ in immune competence, their ability to fend off and overcome infection. Proven methods can strengthen that ability. Yet amid debates about how quickly and strictly we must keep apart and stay home, this powerful complement to avoiding exposure and treating infection is being largely ignored. We're striving to keep the virus away from people and cure them if they get sick, but without also strengthening our natural defenses. This is a serious omission, and you can help fix it. Isolation, distancing, handwashing, all the effective ways to avoid exposure to the virus, remain absolutely crucial to avoid catastrophic overwhelm of healthcare. But that exclusive focus obscures a second powerful tool, strengthening our immune and body repair competences can slow contagion too. Both these strategies buy time to find and isolate outbreaks, surge test kits and ventilators, improve and deliver therapies, and develop vaccines. Stronger immune competence also makes COVID-19 and other more ordinary infections milder and briefer. Reducing the risk of fatal pneumonias, especially for the old, sick, and poor, creates virtual ventilators to augment scarce real ones. Immunity mission, boosting our overall immunity within our communities, could engage our pent-up yearning to protect each other by cultivating health. We're told to avoid exposure, but not to reduce, host hospitality, as being hospitable to the virus by making ourselves more resistant to viral infection. Slowing the spread and flattening the curve will take both. On March 10, though not in later pathfinding articles, the New York Times broke the silence, endorsing five of eight standard immune-boosting methods, sleep, calm, hope, distressing, yes, meditation may help prevent colds, nutrition, exercise, and reducing alcohol, and immune suppressant. Next, add hydration, non-toxicity, and physiological balance. All are vital, your health and immunity depend on what you eat, drink, breathe, do, and feel. The article also edged more controversially toward two of the half-dozen supplements that can boost immunity, vitamin D and zinc. Otherwise, news organizations standard advice is, skip in proven supplements that probably won't help, and may harm, notably vitamin C, A, myth, and, fallacy, that doesn't protect. So our best newspapers say supplements can't boost immunity. Meanwhile, 1 to 6 grams per day G, D, of a certain substance was proven to shorten the use of a ventilator for 471 patients needing more than 10 hours of ventilator support, by an average of 25%, even more for the sickest patients. Well-controlled trials found the same substance could prevent and help treat pneumonia. When sepsis or influenza and pneumonia caused life-threatening respiratory failures, tens of G, D intravenous doses of the same substance proved safe and effective. What's this mysterious substance? The same vitamin C that mainstream media dismiss as having little or no benefit against viral respiratory infections. Based on modern studies and recent rigorous evaluations, vitamin C is far more than just a vitamin, it is a foundational molecule that protects and regulates every cell, and actually seems to be the most effective antiviral agent known. The medical evidence cited also by NIH as supposedly debunking the use of vitamin C in respiratory illness, the 2013 Cochrane Review of 64 clinical trials, actually found consistent curative value, especially at higher doses and in children. Its senior author concluded that all 21 placebo-controlled studies published since 1970 using at least 1 gram per day of vitamin C reported milder or shorter colds. He also wrote the papers cited above on ventilator and ICU savings, and the citations above on pneumonia prevention and mitigation. Even if no supplement worked, we should take better care of ourselves in all other ways that boost immune and repair competence. Public health strategy should combine reducing exposure to the virus with making any infections fewer, shorter, and milder. The Cochrane Review found that even little and infrequent vitamin C did make colds shorter and milder. Various viruses, including coronaviruses, cause colds, so taking vitamin C should make COVID-19 illness shorter and milder too, and the pandemic less severe, even if vitamin C doesn't prevent infection.
It may still make the course of the illness less severe, reducing the burden on our healthcare system. With or without supplements, stronger community immunity is a low risk, equity enhancing, socially mobilizing way to do no harm, do much good, and buy precious time. Immunity will become even more vital if no universal vaccine miracle emerges and if this single strand RNA virus's rapid mutations outpace specific vaccines. Not hedging that bet may soon look negligent. Thank you for watching our video. Please show your support by subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification.